Yo, yo, it's DJ Wellens in the house, and we are a radio host today in Killer Frequency. Except... Why am I in the garbage dumps? Do I live here? Uh, maybe... Oh man, maybe I actually do live here. That would be kind of depressing. Maybe I'm just in between apartments? Am I going to work? You can hold two objects. Swap objects between hands with mouse wheel. Okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Throw objects. Drop objects. Okay. Cool, I guess. Oh, but I can't pick it up again. No, I can. I can. I can just drop it. Okay. Cool. Uh, can I not be in the dumps? That somebody was peeing next to me. <laughs> Where am I? I? I thought I was supposed to be a DJ today. Okay. There are things. Maybe we shouldn't be touching that. That's locked. What kind of an animal is that? Am I going to work? Inspecting objects! E. You rotate it. Wait. How do you inspect it? Hold on. Press E to begin inspecting. I don't see that I'm inspecting it. Am I inspecting it? Oh! After I pick it up. I see. Okay, fam? Is that the name of my radio station? Or is it just a thing? Cool. Oh! Wow, there's like an actual piece of cheese here. Can I have that? Because <laughs> I'm assuming I'm a little bit down on the times and all that. Where is my workplace? Freight elevator? Okay, I got you, crouching. Opening doors. Okay, this is... Yeah, maybe I just went out back and I normally work here. Can't read it. Is that like... 11pm-ish? What? Oh! 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 Hi? Okay! Welcome to Killer Frequency, everybody. Did I mention this is a horror game? Because this is a horror game. You, uh, you hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or, I don't know, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is, but I mean, does Gallows Creek have a stray cat problem or something? Yeah. Not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment before each show, and he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. <laughs> but if you're sure you don't want to... Let's do it. 
Okay, I guess maybe I was just a random person in the beginning. Now I'm DJ Wallens. Okay, let's do it. All right, fine. Let's get through this. Alrighty, this is your captain speaking. <laughs> Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubularants. <laughs> let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. Grab a record, stick it on the player. Like, stick... Uh... uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record and stick it on the turntable. I'm working on that. Thank you. Got it. Great. Now turn it off. Is that the lady I'm talking All to? All right. Up next, phone line buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. L line one. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. <laughs> call me Don. You get it? Yeah, it's a riot. Great, and button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer oh, line? I can move. Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm, is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented it yet. Now come on, the Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. I labeled it for you. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm in the DJ room and then this is the lady that's outside the booth helping me. I guess she's also managing the sound and stuff. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. Uh, yeah, that's so easy. Is anything glowing? Well, there are sliders here. Sound blaster, front of the desk to the right. There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost a done. A soundboard. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. Play a record. Change the music volume. It's a mixer. I got it. I don't know. I'm not sure what the rest of these are. Sliders should be right in front of you. Like, directly in front. I'm sorry, that was the master slider, right? This is the record. All right. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? I uh, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I... thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Is that good? Or do you want to, like, this? Okay, you're live in three, what? two... 189.16 Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. <sighs> Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm gonna play you a scream, then you call and Yes, guess that, that scream. scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. I just put in a Forrest, random one. you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. 
guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest, and you're the one at the mic, so... <laughs> I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jesus. Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. <clears throat> oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to... Guess that scream. Let's do the Yeti scream. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough? Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guess. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. You like the music? Should I, oh, introduce the song? Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song, 1980X. Oh God, Forrest, that was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? <laughs> Lighten up, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. Okay, we're handling ourselves all right. Ooh, looks busy though. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Time to turn the music off. Okay. How do I answer the call? Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Oh. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No! Look, I found a body and I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? First, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews or whatever? I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Oh. Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Was that who we were in the beginning, then? I don't, I don't understand. Where are the other officers? Do they know? Have they secured the scene or, or <laughs> whatever cops are supposed to do? Are we on air right no. now? I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God, wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. We have three. <laughs> but Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. 
Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself. Let them know what's going on and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? Me! That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. Oh my god. I'm not trained. No, I'm sorry, but this is a terrible idea. What on earth made you think to do that? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. <laughs> You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. Like what, talking? It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to what jump What the heck? In. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Peggy, don't leave me. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. Another set of keys... Would that be possible? Would they have doubles of that? Breaking down the door seems violent. Okay, we can try this. There's gotta be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only ones. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Under the carpet. Have you looked around the officer's desks? That's the first place I'd check. That was the first place I'd check, too. I couldn't find anything useful, though. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he... You know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but... I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Please don't stare at me. I am stressed. I... Oh, wait. That might be them. I, 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 th I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do! Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? Um... Can I quit and go back to Chicago right now? I... I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like, like this happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just gonna sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. A peaceful place I'm to back. rest your bones. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. You mean we're gonna be on our own? Just Peggy and me, and no one else, responding to emergency calls. You'll be fine. You and Peggy just work together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh! What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you oh, mean? Oh, I thought it's you on died! Fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No, no way. This can't. Well, Forrest, <gasps> we have big trouble. The sound. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? But that mask. How the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The Whistling Man. The Whistling Man? Who's the Whistling Man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead. He's... What the hell? Oh, 
Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think! I don't know if she... Oh my gosh. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... That... I'll just... Reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes! Got him! Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But... Wait. See, this is where How we are. How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I'm trying to look for the police station. I... Oh, shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. There must be a weapon lockup in the station, right? Could you grab something from there? I saw it earlier, but as you might have guessed, it was locked. But maybe one of these keys I got earlier will help. Let me see. No. Oh! Sheriff's office! No! no. Uh, shit! None of the keys work! Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um... Uh, let me Put this crap away. That's where she is. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? The pepper spray gives you a little bit more distance. Taser is pretty close. Baton is not going to do anything, I think. The pepper spray should be easy to use and carry. Take that. Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... But they're wearing a mask. Wait. Do you hear that? Shoot. If they're wearing a mask, the pepper spray's not going to work on their eyes. Uh... No, I, I can't hear anything. Exactly, it's gone quiet. No more knocking. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay, Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. I'm so sorry. Maybe you should have taken the Just taser. Yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. I can't believe this is happening. Good luck, Leslie. Oh my god. That's one brave woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. <sighs> you know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. I have a feeling we're going to need to use this map to direct oh, people. I think we've got Leslie back on the line. Like, there was little pins here, too. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. We're here. Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. Over. Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez and the passenger seat still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Come get us. Jesus. God damn it. Get Get back! Get away from her! Oh my god. The whistling! No. Oh, I'm so... Get oh! Get up her, you son of a bitch! Forrest, the pepper spray's not working! Damn it! You're not getting through the mask! No! I'm so sorry, Leslie. Leslie, drive! Martinez! God damn it! Okay, Leslie's okay, but I'm sorry, Martinez. Leslie, I, I'm sorry. Forrest, he slit her throat. 
You need to get to Henderson, Leslie. We can't let this happen again. Peggy's right. We've all got our part to play now. How long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek is a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. Two to three hours each way? We have to fill in for that long. That's the way it is. I'll be back as fast as I can. All right, both I... God damn it. I need a minute. I'll be out of range soon. I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. <sighs> Take care, Leslie. And be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. <sighs> well, that was great. We got the first person killed already. Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. That was all on air. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're going to get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. The same one. <sighs> I, need, I need a break. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's going to take her four hours? This guy's going to kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and... Killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just... did. Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. Wow. The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. But what's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. So we're screwed, because it sounds like we're screwed. We're not screwed. Things just aren't great right now. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows <laughs> Creek was that large. No. No, 35 people. At best. <laughs> That's... Uh, get used to the small town. Are you serious? We only have 35 listeners? 35, yeah. It's a school night. <sighs> and what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know... Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big Gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. Five thousand on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Million? Oh. Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet, I guess. Yeah, I guess we're going to learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Oh, I can take it whenever I okay, want. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. That's surprising. Wow, you! I feel like if you have that big of a fan base, people should follow you, especially since the radio is something that you can access pretty much anywhere, right? I'm not ready for any of this. We have a call waiting. I don't have a good feeling about this. I... Because we, we can't see what's happening on the other end. We just have to imagine it. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, 
All right. Oh, God. He's called in. Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? That's not whistling. Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? End the call prematurely. Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Uh, maybe you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice to us? I, I mean, me. <laughs> Cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Or I'll cut your face off. Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. You should have done that way earlier. Not yet. I want to deal with them. You're little shits, you know that? There's been death tonight. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> hey, suck it, old man! <laughs> Devil's hide for one! Woo! For anyone just tuning in, we do, in fact, have an actual killer out in the streets tonight. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. What's this one? <laughs> Crickets. Oh, this could be fun. Now I'm just playing with a soundboard. Is that all right? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I supposed to be doing something? Play a record, Forrest. I'm so sorry. Now it's time to go with the flow. And this is their hit crying for help. Oh, that sounds a lot like us. Peggy, what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, High schoolers. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. All right. Let's do this. It looks like it's maybe about September right now. October tour dates. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. Uh, I don't know if I want to shock her. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like the whistling man is oh. after me, knife in hand. Condolences. Oh, it's actually happening. Where are you now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my car and nothing flat. But I dropped my key somewhere along the way. I never locked the door at least, so I've got a place to hide, but... I can't get moving. Such a small town that she doesn't even lock her door. I don't know if that's a good idea. Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I... Oh! Oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. Look, I don't know a thing about cars. But I gotta start this engine without the keys. Me neither! And you're gonna have to help me. 
Wait, 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 I don't... Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. Well, I don't know anything about cars. You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash. Your friendly neighborhood radio host. Mechanic and... Savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Are we serious? We just let her go, holy crap. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something. Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. <laughs> the offices are out the door and down the hall. Oh! Oh, we're leaving. Okay. Is that lady gonna be okay, Sandra? Still feel bad about Martinez. Vertigo. Weekly. Exclusive first look. Died alone. Oh, wow, that's... Fantastic. It's exactly what I needed. Um, For a small town, we have a pretty big office. I'm sorry, what am I... Why am I going to the women's bathroom? Why, why is this going red? I'm just checking the pla- Whoa. Um, just checking the place out. So many locked doors, so few keys. Other people's workspaces. This is old. Yeah, look at that. We got typewriters around here. The phone, it's a rotary phone. What was that? Now this has to be important. Twins, I borrowed your car theft magazine. Those huevos rancheros aren't sitting right. Gonna need something to read. Pray for me. Okay. Uh... I'm s ah! The way... the buttons? For putting stuff down and turning it is kind of weird. But so can I... The magazine? Can I do something about that? Okay, fam. Okay, not that. So am I... Am I trying to look for the magazine then? Or I don't know how to help. There's a wrench here. But I'm not even sure if that's gonna... I'm not there! Me having a wrench isn't gonna do anything. Mechanic. Some... stuff. The magazine. Will someone borrow the magazine? Car theft. Who borrowed it? Who borrowed it? Can we just stick this on the ground I first? Need a key to get in there. Peggy? Peggy, why don't you come out to help me? Oh god, people don't even keep the place clean around here. I'm not getting in there tonight. You won't even let me in? This looks useful. Wait, do I have to read it? How do I read it? Keyless entry technique. Use a screwdriver as a key. If that fails, remove the steering column cover. Check the serial number and strip, then twist the following wires together. What? Okay. Ah, it's because that note? I don't know what that was. The note? It said... 
Those huevos rancheros aren't sitting right because this guy's going to the washroom. That's why we found it in there, right? W what do I do with this? I bring it with me. Object tray. In the tray? What tray are you talking about? Here. Okay. You find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. When you're ready, shut the music off. They even wait for me, that's so nice. Collar on line one. Thanks, Peggy. Well, let me do a little bit of pre-reading here. Use a screwdriver as a key. If that fails, remove the steering column cover. And then check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires. If there is a four before a three and a no seven in the number, what the hell? What is this? Like, keep talking and nobody explodes? If there is a four before a three, okay, we'll just have to do it. We'll wing it, whatever. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this, baby? Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I... I... Oh. Screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Uh... Unscrew the steering column. All right. Just turn. Just turn. One, two, one, two. <laughs> oh, God. How long are these screws? Okay. Cover's off. Okay. There's a bunch of wires down here all paired up and... Oh, God. My heart is pumping. <laughs> Tell me exactly what you see. Okay, I can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. You need to tell me the number first. There's no timing for this, right? Good. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576-894. Five seven six eight nine four. If there is a four before a three and no seven, well, there is a seven, so forget about the first one. If there is a six anywhere and doesn't start with a five, it does have a five in the beginning, so forget about it. If there is a zero at the end and a three doesn't come before a six, yeah, the last one red and yellow, red and yellow. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. <laughs> oh, perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Uh, hold on, hold on. Purple. Strip the purple wire and brush it against the twisted wires. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and... <gasps> and it's just a body. <coughs> Fantastic work, baby. Good job, Sandra. Don't you want to come down to the jazz studio? You get in for free. <laughs> I almost can't believe it, but we did it. Nice work, Forrest. I bet Sandra is positively jazzed that you answered her call. You bet I am, baby! Oh. We did it! We did it, Forrest! We sure did! Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. <laughs> and remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to... Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. Woo! I still can't believe this is happening. <sighs> right? My Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about. What do you mean? 
Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? Oh, don't say that. Don't be a city boy. Let them live. Oh. It's nothing personal, Peggy, but it's not Chicago. Or, hell, it's not really anywhere. Well, I like it here. People are polite and, uh... Jazzy. Stab happy? Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Oh. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible after a while. Not terrible after a while? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for, I think you're swell. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night and that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. All right, so that was the end of that segment for the night. It looks like what we're going to be doing is primarily directing people to do stuff via choices. I don't know, because we can actually walk around and stuff. I don't know if that means that the killer might come for us eventually or not, but for the moment, that's what it seems like. And for this kind of thing, I think the most important thing is high quality voice acting. And I think it was great. It was convincing. I believed in Peggy and Forrest's relationship. Sandra, my girl Sandra, I love that jazz thing she was doing. <laughs> that part's really great. Getting to control the soundboards and stuff is pretty reminiscent of something like Not For Broadcast, except in Not For Broadcast, the soundboards and stuff is the game, whereas this one is more of a filler and the meat is the, the conversations and the choices that we'll be making. So they're not really tight on the timing. Some of the choices are timed, but most of the time they do give you a lot of, you know, plenty of space to do the thing you need to do. They give us a lot of time, unlimited time, to look for the magazine and to answer all the questions about which wire to um, switch off and whatever. It's not reaction time based, for now. I'm guessing I may have been able to save Martinez if I picked the taser. Maybe not the baton though, because I feel like the baton... If you're carrying somebody and then you try to hit someone else with one hand, I don't think you'd really be able to um, really muster all your strength like that. But that whole situation I feel like highlights that to be a 911 operator or to do anything that's communication based but you have no visual feedback, it's a special kind of skill. And I don't think it's a skill that I'm very good at, really. I'm totally a subtitles person, so when someone's talking, I'm, I'm barely listening to them. I'm way more focused on reading the subtitles, and in that case, when the text disappears, it's like the information's already gone. And it's not even just about the person receiving the information too, the person giving the information. There's always going to be gaps in between what you give and what people receive, so you need to use a little bit of imagination and clarification, if you're not sure, to really get a full handle on what's happening here. I like it a lot so far. It's a bit weird to say this about like a, a horror-ish game, but I think it's really, it's a cute game. Cute concept, maybe a little bit unbelievable about how, oh, we're gonna reroute the police station to the radio station instead. But hey, as long as you can suspend that disbelief, I think, yeah, it's interesting, it's interesting. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments below, and if you would like to see more. This was Wellins with a first look of Killer Frequency. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed playing it. And I will see you all in another place in another time. Bye!